During the gold rush of the late 1800s, ambitious miners and merchants were heading north in the pursuit of gold. To facilitate the droves of people pouring into the provinces, a real network was established by the White Pass and Yukon Route Corporation. This real network became an integral feature connecting the operational network between the Alaskan port of Skagway and the Yukon Territory in Canada. By the mid-1900s, the initial excitement of the gold rush had long since concluded, but the rail network previously established was still heavily in use. In a bid to ease cargo transportation operations, the company commissioned the construction of a purpose-built container cargo ship. In 1955, the vessel Clifford J. Rogers was first put into operation, ferrying up to 600 shipping containers between British Columbia, Canada and Skagway, Alaska. What made the ship's inaugural journey a defining moment was that it became the world's first purpose-built container ship in maritime history. It was also the first ship to employ the intermodal methodology of transiting cargo. The paradigm of the intermodal method utilizes various modes of transport to successfully ship cargo from multiple locations without handling the freight itself when changing modes. The White Pass and Yukon Route Company is credited with initiating the first usage of the intermodal transportation method to successfully ferry cargo to wherever required. The MV Clifford J. Rogers measured slightly over 336 feet lengthwise, had a beam of about 46 feet, and a depth of over 23 feet. It also had a gross register tonnage of around 4,000 tons. Propelling the then massive vessel were two British Murley's four-cycle diesel engines, driving a single-screw propeller through reduction gearing and reaching service speeds of up to 14 knots. The success and efficiency of the Clifford J. Rogers as a pioneering container ship was foundational to our modern global supply chain, and it would not have been possible without the marine diesel engine. In the late 19th century, until the turn of the 20th century, Burning coal to power reciprocating steam engines was widely used to run the ships that drove the industrial era. At its peak, a wide variety of reciprocating marine steam engines were developed, but the triple expansion engine was the most common type. The triple expansion engine had three progressively larger diameter chambers, a high pressure chamber, intermediate pressure chamber, and a low pressure chamber that exhausts to the condenser recirculating the steam. The engine first burns coal to create heat, and in turn, the heat is used to form steam, which then cycles through each cylinder, driving a common crankshaft and converting the expansive potential of the steam into a motive force. The movement of steam between chambers is regulated by a valve train clocked to the piston's movement. Typically, a sliding piston valve is used. The high-pressure chamber receives the initial most powerful blast of steam directly from the boiler, with each successive larger chamber extracting more of the steam's remaining energy. Though this variant of the steam engine was powerful for its time, and was even made famous for its use on the Titanic, its largest drawback was its bulk, labor-intensive operation, and inefficiency. The advancements of the steam engine for marine use would come in the form of steam turbines. And speaking of better ways of doing things, for this very video, I have to show you how I've been using Opera for this exact project. It's completely changed how I manage my research and stay focused. Opera is designed to be intuitive, helping you organize your work without getting in the way. It's packed with features that just make sense, especially when you're deep in a project. Let me show you what I mean. Quite often, I need to compare and integrate information between different sources, and Opera's split screen is brilliant for this. Simply drag one tab down, and you've got the two sources open side by side. For when I'm researching a topic with a large range of different eras and innovations, I can easily group related tabs together. For example, I can create one island for technical milestones, one for the underlying technologies involved, and another for their historic development. And when I'm done with a topic, I can just collapse the entire island to save space, keeping my workspace clean and manageable. When my research leads me to archival footage or a documentary, I use the video pop-out feature. It lets me detach the video from the page and move it anywhere on my screen, even outside the browser window.
window, making it easy to cross-reference information. After a few hours, my workspace can still get a little cluttered. That's where Aria, Opera's built-in AI tool, comes in. Instead of manually sorting everything, I can just use a quick shortcut to open the command line and tell Aria to handle my tabs. I can ask it to close all my unused tabs or pin my research tabs, and it takes care of the cleanup instantly so I don't break my flow. And of course, I can also use Aria to ask any questions that I have, and I'll have answers in a matter of seconds. Opera has completely streamlined my workflow, so give it a try. You can download it for free using the link in the description and in the pinned comment below. Steam turbines offer higher power densities and were more efficient due to their multi-stage approach of directly converting the expansion of steam into rotational motion. Steam turbines facilitated a generation of high-speed liners in the first half of the 20th century and rendered the reciprocating steam engine obsolete, first in warships and then later in merchants' vessels. With the advent of steam turbine engines came the transition to heavy fuel oils as a replacement for coal as the fuel choice in steamships. Fuel oil was more convenient to use and it reduced the manpower needed to process coal as well as reduce space needed for fuel storage. By the 1960s, rising fuel costs almost led to the demise of the steam engine, the transition to the diesel engine as the primary means of marine propulsion had begun. Many existing steam ships were re-engined to improve fuel efficiency. One high-profile example of this was the Queen Elizabeth II, which was built in 1968 and had her steam turbines replaced with a diesel-electric propulsion plant in 1986. Unlike reciprocating steam engines, diesel engines have three to five times greater thermal efficiency. They also were more fuel efficient at lower operating speeds when compared to steam turbines. And most importantly, diesel engines don't rely on external combustion, eliminating the need for a boiler and supporting equipment, making them more space efficient. The story of the diesel engine started on February 28, 1892, when Rudolf Diesel patented his new engine design. The following year, he explained the principles of his revolutionary engine in a then-controversial paper called Theory and Construction of a Rational Heat Engine to Replace the Steam Engine and Contemporary Combustion Engine. Since steam power was commonplace at the time, the diesel engine was not well received. Despite the opposition, Diesel knew that as much as 90% of the energy available in fuel is wasted in a reciprocating steam engine, which is why most of his work was driven by a goal of achieving much higher efficiency ratios. Diesel's deep understanding of thermodynamic principles and the constraints on fuel efficiency led to a key innovation of his design. Fuel is injected just before the end of the compression cycle and ignited by the high temperature resulting from this compression. This is known as compression ignition, and it's the lowest temperature at which an air fuel mixture will spontaneously ignite without a source of ignition and entirely by compression. Modern marine diesel engines are broadly classified according to their operating cycle, construction, and speed. The operating cycle consists of either a two-stroke or four-stroke design. Though four-stroke engines are used on smaller marine vessels, the largest, most powerful engines in the world use two-stroke engines because of its disposition to burn low-grade fuel, reducing the running cost of a ship. Also, there are fewer maintenance requirements and greater reliability over a four-stroke engine. Another key benefit is that since two strokes are low speed engines, there is no requirement for a reduction gear or speed reduction arrangement as in the case of most four stroke engines. Two stroke diesel engines start their cycle when air is introduced to the cylinder through ports located in the cylinder wall. The emitted air is supplied pressurized by a mechanical blower or turbocharger. As the piston is brought upward, the cylinder becomes charged with highly compressed air. Near top dead center, diesel fuel is then sprayed by the fuel injector and immediately ignites because of the heat and pressure created by the compression. Self-ignition occurs and combustion then takes place, driving the piston downwards. The exhaust port opens and high pressure combustion gases are expelled. Continued downward movement of the piston exposes the ports in the cylinder wall and the cycle starts again. Large vessel diesel engine construction generally falls under a crosshead, trunk, or an opposed piston engine design. The size and speed of the vessel is usually the primary determinant of which engine design would be used. In a crosshead engine, the notable characteristic is that the main piston 
has a large piston rod extending downwards from it to what is effectively a second smaller diameter piston known as a crosshead. The main piston is responsible for gas sealing and carries the piston rings. The small piston is purely a mechanical guide that travels along a crosshead cylinder, the purpose of which is to provide additional support to reduce the side forces on the piston that slow speed diesel engines suffer from. This design is often found in large two-stroke engines used on massive ships that run at considerably slow engine speeds. The main characteristic of a trunk engine is that its pistons are long relative to their diameter. Since the connecting rod is angled for much of its rotation, a side thrust is generated which reacts along the side of the piston and the cylinder walls as it moves. The long piston design acts as a crosshead that absorbs this side thrust. This design is commonly used on ships that require medium engine speeds. An opposed piston design is an engine in which each cylinder has a piston at opposite ends, which in turn drives two crankshafts. Interestingly, this design does not incorporate a cylinder head, eliminating the need for a valve train. Despite this advantage, these engines are not as common because of the added weight and complexity when compared to conventional piston engines. Marine diesel engine speed is generally broken down into three categories. Slow speed engines operate with a maximum output speed of up to 300 RPM, though most large two-stroke slow speed diesel engine variants operate well below 120 RPM. Astonishingly, some long stroke engines have a maximum rotational speed of only around 80 RPM. The largest, most powerful engines in the world are slow speed two-stroke crosshead diesel variants. Medium speed engines operate within the range of 300 to 1000 RPM. These are often found on medium sized vessels, sometimes in four stroke configurations. Many typically have a maximum operating speed of approximately 500 RPM. High speed engines have a maximum operating speed above 1000 RPM. These are common on smaller vessels. The propellers of modern large vessels are at their most efficient at the operating speed of most slow speed diesel engines. Therefore, ships with these engines do not generally need gearboxes. Usually, these slow speed propulsion systems consist of either one or two propeller shafts, each with its own direct drive engine. Ships propelled by medium or high speed diesel engines, on the other hand, may have one or multiple propellers with one or more engines driving each propeller shaft through a gearbox. In this configuration where multiple engines drive a single propeller shaft, a clutch mechanism is used allowing an engine to be disconnected from the gearbox while others keep running. This arrangement allows maintenance to be carried out without disrupting the ship's propulsion. In 2008, the International Maritime Organization announced a timeline to reduce the maximum sulfur content in vessel fuels to 0.5% by January 1st, 2020. As part of this policy, a requirement was drafted for vessels to either use fuels containing less than half a percent sulfur or install exhaust cleaning systems to limit a vessel's airborne emissions of sulfur oxides to an equivalent level. An option for vessel operators to meet the IMO 2020 standards is to install liquid natural gas fueled engines which emit only trace amounts of sulfur. Though this policy shift is incentivized by the effectiveness and better long-term operating costs of LNG fueled engines, Limited access to LNG fueling stations has hindered the production of pure LNG engines. The solution to this has resulted in the next evolution of large vessel engines being dual fuel engines that are capable of running on marine grade diesel, heavy fuel oils, or liquefied natural gas. This intermittent solution has offered operational flexibility, high efficiency, low emissions, and operational cost advantages to merchant vessel operators. In order to maintain a competitive foothold in modern global economics and trade, manufacturers are keen to explore advancements in marine propulsion technology. One such stride is electric propulsion, in which an electric drive motor is fitted in a submerged pod outside of a ship's hull. Apart from the increased operating efficiency this offers, this design also increases maneuverability since the pod can rotate 360 degrees. The system is known as diesel electric propulsion, True hybrid systems, which also incorporate large batteries, are becoming more common as well. These systems can potentially save between 5 to 15% more fuel compared to conventional shaft drives. It's projected that the large ships of the future will use this technology. 
Marine diesel engines have transformed the way modern cargo shipping is carried out. These engines can propel massive container ships at a staggering 24 knots while maintaining the greatest fuel efficiency of any engine in the world. Since the Clifford J. Rogers, modern cargo ships have seen an incredible increase in their sheer size as these floating behemoths become larger and the demands of global trade continue to grow the push to further increase efficiency and reduce shipping costs will always be on the horizon.